Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is a bit of information about the community media discussion that we're going to be having again this week on Thursdays from 6pm. Uh, to take part, if you want to join us, uh, subscribe at patreon.com slash Decentered Media. Uh, you can contribute uh, as little as a pound uh, and you'll get sent a link uh, where you can join us on our regular Zoom call and you also get access to the forum that we run and uh, hopefully if early editions of podcasts when we get back around to uh, uh, making some future podcasts. Um, <clears throat> this week I wanted to, we're going to be chatting about... Um, a term that was used to describe the census information that was published this week by the Office of, Office of National Statist Statistics, uh, which uh, was used to encapsulate the uh, data that came through from Birmingham, Manchester and Leicester, which is that they are defined by super diversity. And that they're the first places in the UK, uh, Leicester and Birmingham particularly, are the first places in the UK where there is a non-white majority. And the, the, the extent to which uh, the cultural diversity of places like Birmingham and Leicester uh, is, has accelerated and has been embedded. And I just wanted to have an opportunity this week to consider what the role of community media is in this uh, pro as part of this process and uh, what the consequences are for our broader media in general and how we should really think about um, facilitating and supporting and investing in communities to be able to self-represent and to be able to uh, uh acquire skills uh, and understand and help uh, those communities understand themselves better and also to help other communities understand those communities better uh, it's, it's a complex process it's uh, identif it, it's uh, relatively um, a mixture of uh, identity uh, sorry, I'm having a brain freeze here. I know exactly what I want to say. It's a, it's a mixture of communities of identity, communities of interest, and communities of place. And all of these intermix uh, together, uh, and they, to use a, a phrase of the moment, they intersect. <clears throat> and what way do they intersect? How are they uh, uh, interplay? Where are the boundaries? Where are the... Um, the where, where are things more fluid and where are things more um, structured? And I think one of the challenges, and I, I, I would, um, I, I kind of see this in the, the report and in the mainstream media and kind of easy comments that come and go that kind of say diversity is a good in itself. And I'm not against uh, diversity, please uh, uh, don't, don't, uh, uh, try and call me out on that I'm in favor of cultural social uh, ethnic diversity and but it can't be done on the basis of it can't be managed without investment and it can't be done on the notion that it just exists by itself you have to actually do a lot of hard work and there needs to be social infrastructure in place and there needs to be leadership in place that moves are, moves us forward as a as a community. It's no good uh, just expecting that because you've got a diverse population uh, that you are likely to have a harmonious and cohesive society uh, which achieves its some some form of positive social aim. Um, <clears throat> so diversity without investment is is a problem. Uh, if we abandon people. If we don't invest in people and if we don't create a common identity and a common wealth within our within and between our communities, then what we're doing is we're doing a disservice to people and we're leaving people in uh, ghettos and we're leaving people in uh, situations where they're easy to exploit and situations where they 
uh, are easy to be overlooked. And community media tries to address this by uh, empowering people and inspiring people to articulate their own voice based on their experience. But those experiences are not consistent and uniform. And I think there's often a, a kind of a romantic view from the outside that come and live in an urban space. I'm based in Leicester, so uh, come and live in an urban space which is defined by its diversity and that everything is wonderful. It's all harmonious and everybody gets on. It isn't true. And we've seen this in recent months in Leicester with some of the reported disturbances over in East Leicester. Whatever those the cause and the roots of those disturbances were, they were a reality for a short time. And so we can't really consider the notion of cultural diversity, social diversity, <clears throat> without really thinking about the knock-on effect that it might have in terms of economic performance, uh, in terms of literacy and skills levels, in terms of social capability to engage with the modern world and to be part of an integrated wider community, to be part of the UK and you know, at some point to be part of the European uh, uh, continent and at some point to be part of a globalised world. And so the reference points that we have for our diversity aren't quite as straightforward as, you know, listing a set of categories as if they are a good in themselves and that all we need to do is to identify and, if you like, um, consider those categories as something as a uh, oh, an attribute hang on a second <sighs> yeah it's it's sorry i just got interrupted by uh, uh somebody dropping a parcel off for a, for a neighbor um you know neighborliness um how, how do we foster a sense of mutual support and engagement engagement how do we foster a sense of common belonging and it's not to say that we shouldn't celebrate our differences uh we should uh, but it's also that we should celebrate and focus on our similarities, that we have similar needs and similar um, aims and goals and how we find our shared life meaningful. It's a really important question about that is missing in a lot of the commentary about diversity is that it doesn't really understand or attempt to understand um, what a meaningful life uh, is about and how it's experienced and there are many other factors which divide us uh, which contribute towards social division and we can think about the way our media is used our social media has uh, is quite the model that we have at the moment is quite antagonistic and disruptive we also have things like our you know policy around car culture and public transport we have employment rights we have you know just because we're a diverse community here in Leicester doesn't mean to say that we're a cohesive community uh, because inequality is so pronounced and that levels of employment are based on low skill, low investment jobs, uh, service jobs. And even service jobs are not re respected, if you like. They're often you know, they're minimum wage. They're what they can. They're, they're, it's, it's the race to the bottom. And so there's a, a potential for exploitation. And we saw this in Leicester uh, during the lockdown and particularly with the scandal that came uh, into prom public prominence about the hosiery factories and the clothing factories employing people on without regard for employment standards and health and safety. And so. OK, it, it's one thing to be socially diverse, but it's another thing to be socially cohesive. And how do how does our media help and facilitate that process? Uh, what is it that we can do locally that is going to be able to uh, embed values of respect, mutual support, uh, mutual understanding and not give in to antagonism and be taken uh, on by um you know kind of uh, people who wish to seek advantage from sowing discord and sowing division and and promoting division how do we bring people together <clears throat> and i don't know the answer to this obviously because 
it's a challenging situation and it's moving and we've we've got to find ways that needs leadership and we need to inspire people that it's possible to have a common project which we build our sense of belonging and our sense of identity around there's also another challenge which is places of super diversity to use the phrase that was reported uh, also have to communicate with places that are of non-diverse you know that aren't diverse and there are stark differences in the uk birmingham manchester leicester uh increasingly places like peterborough and nottingham are places of high social diversity but the counties are places of uh, lack diversity they have coherent uh, uh uniform ethnic um uh, profiles and and that difference um is is a challenge because the assumptions that people like the reg the, the 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 media regulators ofcom makes are are guided by um the experience of people in places that don't deal with diversity and don't have to support people uh who uh, need to build up their skills so for example and i've talked about in the blog uh, that goes with this uh, this week's discussion. Um, the media uh, industry diversity report that Ofcom produces, and I've complained about this for a number of years now, uh, doesn't include community media. It only includes about eight broadcasters, large institutional organisations. <clears throat> and I suppose that's because they can fill in the returns about equal, e e equalities profiles within their organisations. But if, if you're, um, you know, from a Somali background and you're not going to get a job within the BBC necessarily or within ITV or within you know one of the, the other large media organisations, you might be working in community media, work, helping with uh, run community radio stations. The problem is that Ofcom doesn't even sample uh, the profiles of people who participate in community media. So we haven't got a full picture of the diversity of our media institutions anyway. Uh, we've only got a small, narrow snapshot, which comes from the major organisations. And it kind of like says, well, yeah, you know, we're, we're OK. Uh, we could be doing better in some areas, you know, more, more, more access and more inclusion for people who are disabled, more action uh, on inclusion for people um who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and so on, um, and more uh, ethnically diverse, diverse populations. But within those ethnicities, there are big disparities as well. So it's it's not as straightforward as simply um, saying everything's wonderful. And I, I think our job is to be critical about this and to ask questions about it and to think it through both in principle and in practice terms about what difference it actually makes and how um, we remove barriers. And those barriers might come in other ways. Those barriers might be through the education system, the housing system. They might come through, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the language that is used. It might be intergenerational. Uh, and there's a whole load of crucial issues that community media can be thinking about to improve participation, access, inclusion in our uh, media, which aren't recognised. Uh, it's kind of, a, you know, often community media is rather patronised um, and uh, as kind of being amateurish. And, you know, the recognition of the essential services that we provide in community media don't often uh, get championed and they're kind of very very seldom talked about in parliament and so on incidentally the discussion uh, at the dcms committee in the house of commons is taking place on the um so uh, uh, the neighbor came to collect their parcels it's all happening here um yeah the uh, the dcms committee uh for the mps will be discussing the proposals by the bbc uh, on uh, Thursday, uh, the 1st of December, around about midday. So watch out for that because this has a knock-on effect. The institutional structures of what the BBC is allowed to do and to represent local 
communities uh, really needs to be challenged. Uh, this kind of uh, I've seen some of the uh, documentation and you know, I, I, the, the the complaint that I've put into the BBC about the uh, consolidation of uh, commu lo uh, English local radio is just a kind of management BS. Uh, you know, it, it's they really kind of um, could make choices in different ways, and they're not giving me the impression that they're here to serve. Uh, people in my community in this neighbourhood, uh, but they're kind of given the impression that they yes they're chasing uh, executive promotion in other companies such as Netflix. So I, I question their motives, and I'm entitled to do that because I've paid my license fee all my life, and I still continue to pay it. Uh, and I've invested in the BBC, uh, and I hardly ever use the services that the BBC offers now because I don't think they're relevant uh, to uh, my experience here. Uh, because they're produced by a professional class which is detached and distant from our cultural experience here in Leicester, for example. Uh, and maybe other people feel the same as well. Anyway, I'm getting on my soapbox and uh, I think it's uh, time to uh, remind you of how to get in contact. Uh, it's, I'm on Decentered Media on Twitter and Instagram. The website is decentered.co.uk. If you go to Patreon to subscribe, it's patreon.com slash Decentered Media and sign up and come and join in the conversation because I'd love to have a discussion about these topics with you. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can we can uh, mutually uh, inform and enlighten and uh, engage with one another uh, in, a, in a creative, supportive and uh, uh, hopefully fun kind of way. So speak to you soon. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at decentered media.